Well, hi, you folks. World famous Dave Ensign here. My new video series, How to Do Stuff. We're going we're gonna to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the world's a, been a sad place lately. And uh, especially over the last year, I, I think we all need to relax and make something. And that something is going to be a tiki bird. That's what we're going to start on first. A fully animatronic Disney style tiki bird. Pneumatic power, brass cylinders, as close to the originals as I can possibly get without any real blueprints, any, without any real measurements. Um, it's, I'm just going to go for it and see what we get. Um, my love for the Tiki Room goes back to about 1975 when I first went to Walt Disney World and uh, it was Tropical Serenade. It's called the Enchanted Tiki Room. Um, man, I was blown away. My brother and sister never liked shows because they would rather be on a ride. To me, I, I don't know what the difference is. The movie, and that, that makes it better. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I, I could sit there and watch the Tiki Birds forever. You know, Country Bears, same thing. And I would always try to look in their mouth or, you know, try to see some sort of mechanism. Like, how is this done? What is happening here? How, how is this possible? You know, and uh, along, along about high school, we were sitting around in the uh, library. And my friends and I, we took physical education, but early on, we, we told the coach, you know, there's no point to this. <laughs> we're a bunch of dorks. We're, we're not going to join the football team. And we have a library pass. So for the entire year, we went to the library. And we would pretty much just sit in there and flip through National Geographic, you know, and do the thing where you erase take a pencil eraser and you make a cartoon bubble over someone's head and write something ridiculous in there. <laughs> and it was, it was all fun and games. And all of a sudden, one day, my friend Kevin Saletti says, I didn't know they had Minnie Mouse in Borneo. What the hell are you talking about? And what he was talking about was this. This August 1963 National Geographic. And many of you have probably seen it before. But uh, he handed me this issue. And it, it set me on fire. It really did. Um, and I'll show you why. My goodness. Well, first of all, there's a huge story about Walt Disney right out of the gate. You know, mostly about uh, cartoons and things. Look at this. This nice man is programming a tiki bird. Can you get a little closer to that? Look at that. I think that's Eric Sintensio. I'm not mistaken. But right away, it's like you know, I, I can't explain <laughs> it's Just flipping through this again, it, you know, it gives me the chills. It's so great. And then, you know, a thing about animation there. And, uh, you know, pretty bland map of Disneyland, if you ask me, but <laughs> it's cool nonetheless. Big fold out. Guy in a sombrero walking along the rivers of America there, eating some popcorn. You know, walk on the phone. Okay. Get into the park. Of course, the Jungle Cruise. My all-time favorite attraction. And, uh, oh, there's this little Tinkerbell. You know, mine trains in nature's wonderland. But, but this is where it starts to get really intense for me. 
because these men, that's uh, Jack Gladish on this side, and uh, Bud Washoe, I believe, and of course they're working on a caveman for the World's Fair. But right behind them is a tiki bird up on the up on the perch in the workshop there. You know, probably one of their extras or or what have you. Because I believe it, at this time it was already open. I I might be wrong about that. But really, you know, <laughs> I can't dork out enough about this because seeing this stuff was was just fantastic. And you know. Jose, you know, Laoda Tombs over here, working on a bird. Look at this fascinating picture. I got an up close of that for you here in a minute, but this little picture really sparked my imagination. I had to know what this stuff was, and I, I eventually learned. And of course, going on to Abraham Lincoln's head, you know, all these brass parts. I, I just, I love it. All milled out. Perfect. There's Jack Gladish again. Now, this issue has inspired a lot of greats in our industry. Garner Holt, for example, mentioned this to me one day at launch. You know, this very book inspired him to go into animatronics and you know you all know how it went from there uh, my pal Billy Bob same thing he was struck by this had to get into animatronics and he did and he went to work and co-created the show this pizza um, rocket fire explosion and oddly enough Billy Bob hired Jack Gladish in the from the guy in this book he he hired this man <laughs> to work on the show this stuff in its infancy i i don't know where he ever wound up um i've seen an interview or two but uh it's a small world that's for sure um let's take a look here some other stuff you know this this is pure magic i love seeing this I mean, Walt looks like he's truly enjoying himself. Up there, you know, teaching little kids to uh, go ahead and touch the animatronics. <laughs> How lucky can you get? <laughs> and, uh, of course, over here in Florida, it was a, a different feeling altogether. We had a Florida Citrus sponsorship you know and it was very everything was very grand over here in Florida when it was built and um, you know, for better or, or worse the tiki room was much bigger um, everything sort of had a like the, the uh, paint jobs on the birds you know and the fur and feathers for the Florida version were very groovy <laughs> 1969 you know 1970-71 colors and they were very citrusy like orange and yellow and you know uh, colors like that a lot of green and um that's what we got and of course ours was called tropical serenade so people used to say let's go in the tiki room you know and Someone else would mention tropical serenade. They were, what, what are you even talking about? So that's how that started. Okay, let me see what else I got here. Now, here's that picture again. Now, I'm going to build the toucan because I've always liked the toucan version. Um, this, of course, is the magpie or something. I don't know. I, I don't know what you would call this thing. It's not a crow. <laughs> Maybe it's a minor bird. Anyways, you look at these these cylinders here. These air cylinders. Well, these are for head, left, and right, and center. And you can barely see another one underneath here. 
I believe it's for head up and down. This bird doesn't appear to have a tail movement. Um, it's, it's smaller. They had to pack a lot of a lot more into these, I think. And it's it's really incredible how much they they really got into each bird. You know, here's from the same photo shoot. These are the air hoses going in to the different cylinders. And uh, of course, he's, he's white because he's not painted yet. You know, you always start with the white fur and then you airbrush the whatever color pattern you want on it. So, she's probably in the process of, of putting this fur on, most likely. So, back to high school. Uh, a friend of mine, Shell Harris, he was also completely struck by this. And we got to build a bird, Dave. We got to build a bird, and he was—he's a genius. Number one, he shell could build anything, so not too bad myself. So we started up with a, a little sketch, and uh, here he is. It was—it was Poncho the parrot, <laughs> and uh, we were kind of animating, but we, we had no idea how to do this. You know. No, there's a uh, F77, that's my blog. Just Google search F77 blog for some more of my crazy crap. But uh, we have this breathing mechanism here. We, you know, we have a head up and down. Uh, I guess that's a weight, I, I think. I don't know. But uh, back during this time, you know, kids in high school, this is like 80, 85, 86. You weren't just going to buy air cylinders unless you were rich, you know, which we were not rich. So we had to come up with some other way to animate this, this thing. Uh, there was a local distributor for pneumatic parts, and uh, we went there and begged for free parts. <laughs> we, well, we didn't get any. And uh, finally, Shell came up with a brilliant idea. And uh, his idea was to basically use electromagnets. And he said, hey, man, did you ever plug a, a phone, a headphone jack into your tape player and notice that if you put a little light on the end of the wires, it, it flashes and makes a little show, a little light show. We both got to thinking that could power an electromagnet. And by God, that was exactly audio animatronics. That's exactly what they did. Uh, the same exact thing. So, let's see. Um, also came for the toucan design. Just about the same ugliness. <laughs> well, what the hell? My, my pivot points are right. You know, it's a good start. And, uh, you know, here, here's another picture we found in a, a different magazine. This is all blurred out. I don't even, I can't even tell what it is, but electrifying nonetheless. So, um, this is a, a little bird that can can be restored. And, uh, again, you can see the same air cylinders in there. Uh, this bird is tiny. It's a it's really incredible that they got this much into it. This air cylinder, you know, has a little wire hook screw that, that goes to the, the tail, the one there on the left. And uh, that little bridge going over the the uh, two cylinders, you notice there's a little nut on the top. And that's for placing the back of the bird on and screwing it down. And that's how you would access the, the stuff. But um, those same air cylinders are still for sale today. And I actually have a bunch. Now here's our little pal again. And um, going back to the audio animatronics idea. Um, you know, it was an electric pulse 
that came through these wires and uh, they would amplify that pulse. So, for example, if you play in a, a tape deck, you have two tracks normally. You know, they would divide studio tape up into different tracks. But uh, let's take this for example. You have a left and right speaker. Well, that would be two movements worth of tape at home. So that pulse, like if you played a tone, you know, like that, would activate the, the little magnet, the little solenoid, and make the bird's mouth open or close or, or what have you. And if you were just to play a voice talking, like a character voice, it would animate automatically. And uh, it's kind of important because as you see in th this bird's legs here, the, the picture there on your right, there's two little wires that run into the back of his legs. Now, there would be two air hoses running up his legs, but obviously you can't fit all that in. So um, what they've done there is they've run it up the back. Well, those are for the mouth. And if the soundtrack would come through those, and a little electromagnet inside his mouth would open and close right along with the audio, audio animatronics. You don't see a lot of that. Uh, a lot of people trying to explain that. But that's that's the way it is. And uh, another thing is, you know, you hear the story about uh, Julie Andrews in Mary Poppins. She had the little bird on her finger. You know, we all we all know that scene. Beautifully animated. Well, that bird was mostly electromagnets. And that's why there's that story that the bird actually shocked her and she tried to shake it off her, her hand. It had electricity going into it. So, let's see here. Let's um, switch to this. This is about all I have to go on, really. It's a 1960 patent by Wafer Rogers. And, uh, what you're seeing here is that cylinder shape in, in the middle of the bird has a rod going through it. And when that rod is electrified, it pulls one way. When its electricity is off, it goes the other way. So you could make him move his tail, mouth, you know, pretty much simultaneously, back and forth. And it has the wires going down the legs. And, uh, you know, to control it. So, out of one of these things, you get two movements. And here you are with the dual track tape machine. And the amplifier, one, one track plays the bird's noises. The other side actually actuates the bird, audio animatronics. And here's a, here's a picture that again and this is the solenoid which is basically the, the uh, uh, electromagnet this is the solenoid that uh, when electrified the rod goes in when the electricity is off it comes back out and I've got two little connectors up there they still sell this thing they sell them in all kinds of sizes and so we happen to have one or two of those playing around. Uh, interesting, this one is a uh, patent from 66. But this is your standard uh, Peaky Bird from 1963. And uh, what you're seeing there in the head is a little, the, the little cylinder there. is a little electromagnet again. And number 18 and 16 there are the wires for the electricity to go in and out now for heavier movements they had to they had to do something uh, with a little more beef and that's where the air cylinders came in but they learned that they could control the air cylinders with solenoid valves now when the electricity goes into the electromagnet it lets the air through and into the air cylinder 
when it's turned off, the air is exhausted out. So same, same principle, same thing. And uh, look at this tree. <laughs> I've, I've read the description of these for a lot of times, folks. <laughs> you know, it shows your breathing mechanism. It shows your uh, brass air cylinders in there. And all the birds are basically the same. You know, even though the parrots and the toucans are shaped different, it's pretty much this layout. And this is what I'm going to use. This is what I'm going with. Uh, as close as I can get it. And every piece in mine is going to be brass, pretty much everything. And it's going to be polished to a, a mirror shine. So when you open the back of the toucan, it's going to be like you're opening up a, a car hood on a, on a classic car. You know, it's been restored like a hot rod. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Let's see here. Now there you are again with the, the little uh, electromagnet in the head. And surprisingly, they still sell that. Almost the exact same thing. Wonder what we'll do with that. Right. And uh, forward, 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 forward. Let's let's take a look at this. Oops, there's me. Oh, okay. I'm new to this, by the way. Um, let's tear it at the at what I have on my desk. Not only that. I also have my original toucan drawing. Ain't that something? <laughs> Fresh from high school. But uh, the most important thing I have is from 1993 when I decided to build myself a tiki bird. For the first, second time actually. And that's this drawing. Now, this is as close to actual size as I could possibly get by actually standing on the bench in the tiki room with a tape measure and trying to <laughs> figure out how far is it from here to here, how far is it from the center of the eye to the, the tip of the feet. Not an easy task. You know, also watching the, the videos of uh, Walt Disney penning that, that one bird, you know, how big was his hand in comparison. I think this from 1993, this pattern, I, this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to go with uh, what my young self came up with and not try to second guess it. So uh, let's have a look at some other fun stuff I got. Got all kinds of stuff. Now, look at that. This is one of the brass cylinders we thought we're just talking about. And they're still made today by Clifford Pneumatics. They come in a handsome little box. But uh, basically, you have two so where you can put your air cylinder or your air fitting that the hose goes in you can put it on the back or this comes out and you can put this on the back and the air hose can go in through there which whichever winds up working basically the air goes in the cylinder does that the air goes out it, it springs back in it's a single action just like that that's what you see in the pictures. Almost exactly. Let's go back and take a look at that. Oh, there they are. Looks like the one has a blue paint on it or something, but that's it. So. Alright, I have enough. I have that one. Little monkey head. 
I like this room up here, I mean. And I think everybody likes the room up here. So I have head, left, right, and center on these two cylinders. That this air fitting needs to go. Number one is too modern. Uh, did I say number two? Number one is too modern. Number two, it's not brass. You need to get some little brass barb fitting for these. Alright, there we go. Those are going to go in there. A breathing mechanism. It's another one. As you can see in that Leota Tunes picture, it uh, goes on the underside of these other two. Okay. It's going to look down here somewhere. Alright. That's three. I think the mouth is going to be an electromagnet. I think I think I should do it that way. For audio animatronic sake. Um. Now this one. It it's used at Disney or was in such things as uh, chickens. You know, in parts of the Caribbean, there. Their head left and right would be this cylinder, and this big cylinder acts the same as these little ones. Spring action in there. But I was thinking I might have to use this, or get myself a smaller one. Just maybe I don't know half, half the size, because I'm dealing with a a larger area out here. You know put a lot of weight on this body tilt motion. I'm pretty sure this is not enough to do that. I got this old dog here, that's the same. There he goes. But uh, it's going to have to be something substantial because that's the only way I can see it, this weight being moved properly. Might, might have to get a smaller one. But that's all right too. All right. So, oh, unrelated. Check this out. I, of course, I I won't use this one, but this little air cylinder. Look at that. Is that incredible? Little fella. Same thing. Air goes in. Can you barely grab it? Did you know? That would easily work in a little bird's mouth these days. I don't think I don't think they had these back then. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Keep those around there. To go with the brass uh idea in the shiny brass. I'm going to use clear hose, clear air hose, because it just looks cool. It's going to, it's going to look cool that way. You notice in the other pictures, um, you have the different colors so you can tell them apart. And that's cool, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do clear. Now, controlling this whole creature, is this little device. Hold it up and you can see it. Green screen. <laughs> Let me see that part. This is made by um, FrightIdeas.com and they are basically a, a haunt industry supplier of controllers and things. The pneumatics, you know, motors, light effects, whatever. But uh, I've used them in the past several times and for the price you cannot beat this machine um, basically your show is only limited to the size of the SD card you put in the side of it so this 256 megabytes this, this runs a long show and uh, you got your power supply you can go DMX if you want you know if you want to also have a, a spotlight under the bird you know, 
to control, things like that. You can also have inputs over here where you can have a trigger or you can have a motion sensor and your friends walk in front of the thing, you know, it starts doing its show. My fiestas are getting shorter and shorter. Then up here you got uh, one through eight are your, your solenoids and it can control eight movements, this little box. So that's plenty for me. I got one, two, three, and four, and five's gonna be the electromagnet. So uh, I could actually get a, a, a stand coming up, you know, with the, the T-shaped bamboo bird to sit on. I could actually have the thing rotate a little. That's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that. Um, basically, uh, their software for this is free. You can also buy the cable that uh, runs into here and into your laptop so you can program the mouth movements exactly to the soundtrack, in the whole show, right? To whatever soundtrack you want, you can put in uh, Florida Barker Bird, Disneyland Barker Bird, you could go in there, you know, uh, Jose show whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's endless possibilities. And uh, this, now, this is a, a little big, and it, it's not period, but it's it'll work for sure. And this is for a little heavier duty type cylinder, but this is your electromagnet slash solenoid valve. Uh, when the power goes in here from the controller, it channels the air in or out. So, with a cylinder like these, you would plug one for it or have it as an exhaust or exhaust on the bottom. And each, each function gets one of these. So, I have all these ready. Also have uh, uh, the manifold that fits on. You'll, you'll see the whole thing because we're going to put it together right here on, the, on this channel. Absolutely. First thing we're going to do is sculpt this bird, and I'm going to use oven baked polymer clay with Sculpey, Fimo, what, what have you, because I want to be able to bake it, and I want to be able to sand it. And I want to make sure I get this all nice and smooth, you know, perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, these, these eyes um, and the calipers, I can't do it right now, but uh, these eyes. I'm going to get from uh, Mackenzie Brothers Taxidermy, and they have an eye, a glass eye, that looks exactly like a tiki bird, which is freaking great. As as far as color scheme, um, I think I'm going to go with uh, that orange, yellow, uh, even red, groovy. Color scheme you see it in some pictures online. I don't have one right here with me, but um, you see this uh, very citrusy, you know, seventies groovy looking bird. I think I'm going to go with that color scheme. I was thinking uh, green and purple before, but I, I want this to to be you know, like something I saw in my childhood. And that's going to be great. And for the fur, we're not going to get all fancy, I'll tell you that. We're, we're going to use regular fur cloth because I've noticed that in some of the newer tiki birds like uh, Rosita at Disneyland, who's in, you know, out there in the, uh, that new area next to the Jungle Cruise, she looks a little heavy, a little, a little fat, like maybe the fur cloth is too thick. I don't know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to get around that. And feathers, we're going to order them from the same place that Disney got feathers from all those years ago. And uh, they're a little expensive, but we'll, we'll pull through. We'll get it. And that's about it. Uh, any questions, comments, uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe so you don't miss anything. 
we're, we're going to do other things as well. This is going to be an expensive project with the, the brass parts for the inside. So in between waiting on those things, we'll work on other stuff. Like, uh, first thing I want to make is a diorama of a scene from uh, Ford Motor Show, the World's Fair, Magic Skyway. That all be fun. Sculpt the little dinosaurs, you know. Stuff to keep me busy off the streets. I'm not causing trouble. Alright, so, again, please subscribe, comment if you like, any questions about anything, feel free. Thank you. Bye.